Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and you are very welcome to this glass house and greenhouse tour. Now, in this video, we're going to visit my glass house, which is this structure here behind me, to check out my permanent collections. So I grow a variety of subtropicals, a lot of succulents, some cactuses, and a lot of South African bulbs. We're going to take a look at them in there in just a moment. And then, because I'm lucky enough to have a second greenhouse, we're going to visit the greenhouse behind where I carry out propagation, seed sowing, and general potting. And I have some interesting updates there for you on things that I've done in the past. Not to mention also showing you how I make my peat-free compost for use in the garden and also for use um, in, with potted plants. Now, if you're new to the channel, you should know that I garden in what roughly equates to as zone nine. We don't use that system here in Ireland, but that would be it in terms of hardiness. And that means that in the winter, for my permanent collection in here, I put heat in the glass house and I covered it in, I cover it in bubble wrap which stays on until I get around to taking it off in early summer. The bubble wrap came off several days ago. I was very tardy this year, but now the greenhouse is looking much fresher. The glass has been cleaned as far as I could reach anyway, because we have a lot of high planting going on over here, which didn't allow me to get in and clean the glass properly. And so with that freshness and that newness in mind, we're going to visit the glass house, visit the greenhouse, and I hope you will really enjoy the video. Any resources I mention during the course of this video will be mentioned in the description in the details down below with the appropriate links. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. And I suppose the first thing that draws the eye when you come into this greenhouse is my King Protea in glorious, glorious flower. It has just gone over now, so you've missed the flowering for this year. But you can see it was quite extensive. We have this big bloom here and several more over the other side. And this plant is doing so, so well. It's in a pot that's sunk in the greenhouse border. And some of you may recall how I planted up this border a few years ago with a permanent display. The idea is that this will give shade to the glass house and a feeling of being in a subtropical place somewhere. And down at the very end, we have new shelving. Now, you may recall from my triple unboxing video that this shelving was originally bought to house my epithelium collection, but the epithelums are actually on the shelf over here. And the reason I've had to move my epis over onto this more sturdy shelf is because the new shelf is actually not very strong at all. And some of the metal has started to buckle already, so I don't recommend it. But what we do have on this shelving is my Disa orchids. Now, these are orchids that like to sit in water. They're bog orchids from South Africa, and they're doing so well. Somebody asked about these recently, and there you go. I don't usually feature them unless they're in flower and they're in bud at the moment. They should give rise to a great display very, very soon. And while we're here, I notice that these plants have dried out a bit. So I'm just going to top them up with rainwater. And the way to do it is to just pour the rainwater in through the top of the plant and it'll trickle down and sit in the tray underneath, which has no holes in. And that's what they like. So 
So this is the shelving on the other side, sturdier stuff that has lasted me for many years, 15 years now. Um, certainly better than that shelf down the end. And on this shelving, I put the stuff that's looking good at the top, the stuff that's dormant or not looking good down below. And with dormant, I'm talking specifically about South African bulbs. There'll be numerous ones that are breaking dormancy or are summer dormant. And then the heavier plants go on the floor below. But there are a couple of little things I want to show you and give you an update on because they really are so, so dinky. And I've uh, selected these two plants here, which I will show you and these I recently got from cactiireland.com and you can see it's a variegated euphorbia is the one on the right gorgeous 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 and on on the left I think actually it's the other way around for you isn't it we have areocarpus which is oh isn't it gorgeous look at the wooliness in there <laughs> it's so soft absolutely fantastic and i was having a quick glance at the cactiireland.com website just before this video and i noticed that they have some really cute astrophytums there i think i might have to make myself another order <laughs> you can never have too many plants i think that's my motto i do have some other things i want to share with you ah yes 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 oh my goodness this is such, such exciting news. So this is the elephant foot plant, or Dioscoria elephantipes, and I grow it from seed. There's a whole batch of them. They're kind of sequestered here and there on the shelving. Four and a half years ago. And this is the first one to create fissures. Do you see that? Can you see how the codex which sits above the earth is splitting. And this is the typical presentation of this type of Dioscoria, very, very desirable. And it's great to see that my little babies are finally growing up. And this one, this one, it's getting there. So, so proud of that, fantastic. And there is a video somewhere which is the video when I originally sewed these. Gosh, I think it needs another another repot. I really think I repotted this last year, but it's the full of the pot almost. I certainly don't want to hold it back. So I think this might be due a repot in the greenhouse in just a minute. Also, down here, we have some lovely little plants that were recently sent to me by a gentleman in Germany called Joachim. And these are doing really well. We have a Eucamus there, some other bits and bobs, and Mervilla, this one here. The fabulous, amazing, blue flowering South African bulb, Mervilla, which he grew from seed, and it's growing for me. So I'm absolutely delighted about that. And thank you, Joachim. And this is the pretty end, I guess, of the staging where we have a pelagonium coming into flower. And this is one with lovely variegated foliage. We have Rhodoxus in flower, which are these tiny little flowering things here. We have this baby, Ledbordia. Look at this, absolutely fantastic. So it's South African bulbs again, but look how they flower. It's just an absolute mass of gloriousness, a real, real beauty, super. But what I really wanted to show you down this end, oh look, there's a bud on my Echinopsis. What I really wanted to show you was, I wanted to give you an update on the video that kicked off the videos for this year, where I potted up the bulbs I bought on Madeira Island where I was in December and you you'll recall that video I recall it very well because it was all wet and drab and I was confined indoors 
but the thought of those subtropical wonders and how they would bloom for me really motivated me and made me pot them up. And here they all are and they're all doing brilliantly. At the back we have the three proteas and when I say protea we're talking protea family so there's a tilopia there's a leucospermum and there's an actual protea and they're all putting on new growth and doing super. Just in front we have my heliconia which looks dead but there new growth so it discarded this stem and just pushed up a new growth which is great nerines and finally that giant scylla madarensis bulb that was rotting well look at it it's doing really well now these plants are all a bit floppy because they've been indoors until recently so they've been stretching for the light but hopefully now that I've brought them out to the greenhouse they'll do great so down in this corner as we mentioned Rhodoxus looking really good another little cactus from Cacti Ireland doing super and ah yes back there look it's the tree crinum that you saw me buy relatively recently and the good news is that it's pushing up new growth it's also producing roots so much so that I had to put it in a bigger pot so hopefully it's going to get going soon and going to be absolutely fantastic also what we have here is my cabbage tree or the Robinson Crusoe palm which it produced really big leaves when I got it first enormous but now it's more kind of a trunk and some leaves on top which is less attractive really so I'm not sure why it's doing that but anyway it's 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 doing well it's hanging in there and just beside it we have my mountain papaya tree which was potted up just yesterday so you're going to see my potting mix how I make my potting mix when we move into the greenhouse section I used that mix for the mountain papaya with some added perlite for drainage and down on the floor we have boo boo and of course it is boo boo's greenhouse but before we leave this greenhouse I must remember to take this pachypodium with me because I want to repot it with you in the other greenhouse so moving over from boo boo you'll notice something strange going on over here and just to the right of that euphorbia I rescued a few years ago we have a tipuchina tree sitting on top of something well let's have a look at what it's sitting on top of yes it's the trunk of the brugmansia which we had to get rid of well that brugmansia had to come out because it was lifting the paving in the greenhouse the tipuchina on the other hand isn't looking great and there'll be more on that I intend to make a separate video about what to do with a tibuchina that's looking like this and repotting it okay pachypodium in hand let's head on over to the other greenhouse and here I am in my working greenhouse and every day I'm so grateful to organicgarden.ie who from whom I got this greenhouse it is just so wonderful to have this space to make a mess in and do the things that you might be restrained from doing because you don't have the space in the glass house for example that you want to look pretty anyway so many things to show you in here but perhaps a good place to start is with the lilies and can you see can you see this lily in flower <laughs> let's put the pachypodium down so here we go look at that so this is one of the lilies that I propagated by scaling not very long ago you'll recall that video I think it probably brought a lot of people to the channel 
and this is the Asiatic one, Night Rider, which looks very orange in my sunny, sunny climate here at the moment in Ireland. And it is just, <laughs> it's in flower, absolutely wonderful. So here are all of those lilies that I propagated by scaling, the ones called Night Rider. Here are the Spaciosum ones, some of which have gone dormant. And here are some of the tiger lilies that I propagated from bulbils. You'll recall in my last garden tour video that I planted some of these out in the garden already. And look, they're going to flower. And down here we have seedlings of Echium wilpretii. Thank you very much, Dimitri, for sending me the seeds. And to the right of the Echium is Stenandrium, a water bog loving plant from Florida. And many thanks to Daniel for sending me the seeds. I think perhaps it's a bit hot in here for it. Not doing terribly well, but hanging in there. And speaking of seedlings, in case anyone was wondering what happened to my Mechanopsis, the blue Himalayan poppy, well, it's far too hot in the greenhouse for them now. So they have a shady position over here under the shade of some hawthorn trees where they and a few other plants like Clavias, Cymbidiums have their summer repose. And down at the very back of the greenhouse is my grapevine. Now this is doing brilliantly, so vigorous. And the variety here is Black Hamburg, which is a recommended one for my part of the world and for greenhouse growing. And if you want to know more about how I planted this, I'll link to a video up above. Well, the exciting news is that the vine actually produced grapes this year. Oh yes, cute, cute little grapes that had to be removed because unfortunately for the first couple of years you need to let the plant funnel all its strength into producing really sturdy roots rather than dissipating it on juicy fruit. So I'm just gonna have to wait a few more years for those first delicious fruits. They'll be all the more delicious and welcome when they do come. And moving a little bit further down the greenhouse, we see my pride and joy, my codex plant. She's called Jessie, an Ibervillia. And Jessie is doing very well. She has pushed into new growth. It's a climbing plant, of course, a codex climbing plant. So you have a big succulent structure full of water that tides the plant over in times of drought. And then in spring, it pushes up all this leafy new growth, which is a right pain in the house, I can tell you. But now that I've brought Jessie out to the greenhouse, I hope that she'll just feel more comfortable. I'm so, so pleased with this plant. And of course, these Ibervillia, they're dioecious, so you've either got male or female plants. And my Jessie, she was named Jessie because I didn't know she was a she originally, but I found out that she was a she when she flowered last year. And you probably noticed this big, heavy bag of potting mix just over here. Now, don't mind what it says on the bag. That's not what's in the bag. You know, with plastic bags, compost bags in particular, we need to reuse everything that isn't recyclable. We need to use as much, as much as possible. And inside this bag is my own homemade peat-free potting mix, which I use for plants in the garden, but also for a number of potted plants in the greenhouse too. And I want to share with you how I make it. So first up, you add one part cheap peat-free compost. Now we all want to do our bit for the environment and using peat-free composts is so important. It can be just very hard to find ones which are good. So I'm now mixing my own and I start off with a cheap peat-free compost, the cheapest one. And in this case, I'm using the mix that was at the bottom of my tulips pot. 
tulips you remember the tulips in front of the house well there was a lot of compost a lot of mix that came out when the bulbs came out and we're using one part of that here next up i use one part of good peat free compost now i can't tell you what that is wherever you are but i know that here in ireland the one made from worm casting seems to be rather good next up i use one part leaf mold now this is a product i make in my own garden from leaves you can do the same there's a video on my channel somewhere that you can check out if you're unsure how to do it and finally i'm using one part own soil now my soil is very dry and perhaps not the best because it's taken from beside the greenhouse and as you can see here the area beside the greenhouse was kind of excavated and dug down so this isn't even necessarily topsoil but it's a product that I have because this soil keeps on falling down and I'm using it in my potting. And finally, to hike up the nutritional value of the compost, I'm using a fertilizer from Ocean Leaves. Now this is homegrown Irish seaweed that has been dried and made into fertilizer. I've used it before and I'll use it again. And for this particular mix, I'm using half the strength recommended for hanging baskets. I'll have to judge as time goes on whether I need more. Then I give my mix a really good mix and store it in a bag. This mix here I'm going to use straight away to repot my tree fern. Now Dixonia Antarctica doesn't last longer term in a pot. It's a plant that really wants to be in the ground but <laughs> <laughs> I'm shy of putting it in the ground because I had a terrible loss a few years ago when we had a really harsh winter and I lost four mature tree ferns in the garden and that's made me reluctant to plant this one out. So for the moment it's staying in a pot and of course because it's been in the pot for a while it's a bit tricky to get out. I'm using a knife to go around the edge, loosen the compost, pull the thing out. It sounds so easy, but it's not really. And then place it into a bigger pot with some of my purpose made mix. Now I will use this potting mix on other plants too. I've used it on the mountain papaya that you saw there in the greenhouse and I just added a little extra perlite for drainage. But you know, if you're anything like me, then sometimes you have lazy days and you don't want to do the research of looking up what kind of mix you need for whatever plant. And in that case, Cy Botanica comes to the rescue and they have produced a lot of these pre-mixed composts that are excellent for houseplants, houseplants chiefly, or cacti and succulents. And today we're going to use one of their products to repot the pachypodium. Now, even though these are really well mixed, it's always a good idea just to pour it into a trug. I have a little trug here first and that will just remix it because even though if it was mixed properly beforehand in the bag it may have settled a bit the smaller particles will go to the bottom so the small bag like this it's easy to just pour it into the trug and like this you can ensure that it's properly mixed and this one actually isn't bad at all but I've been using different mixes of theirs for a variety of house plants. Recently I've repotted my Diefenbachia, a philodendron, my Hoya, my begonias, a Pelia, and all of them using the mixes recommended by Cy Botanica. The great thing about their website is that if you're not sure which mix to use for a particular plant then you can look up the plant 
on the website and if it's not there you can contact them they're very open to that so in the case of my Diefenbachia, I wasn't sure which mix to put it in, but the website confirmed that it was the ficus mix. And now all that remains is a top dressing of pumice, which is also provided by Cybotanica. And pumice or gravel is a great substance to stop splashback happening on your cacti or succulents. You know, you want to keep the neck of the plant quite dry and pumice is, well, it's just fantastic for that. Okay, it looks a lot better, doesn't it? Oh, where's the label? Yeah. And that brings me to the end of this greenhouse and glass house update video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something in there that was of interest. For further updates, if there's a plant in particular that you want me to mention that I didn't mention, then do say so. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye.